Saturation is a trap that is common to all photography. Hypersaturated colors are popping, eye-catching, and introducing them into an image gives us an immediate sense of gratification. A popping image seems to say, wow, that's great color. The trap is that generally after looking at such an image for a few moments, it no longer quite looks real. And the world isn't that popping. The other part of the trap is that saturation clipping leads to loss of detail. Detail is contained in the contrast between light and dark within an image, and that's going to be found in the high bandwidths of an image. But every action in photography has a cost, a consequence, and adding saturation reduces the ability of the pixels with which we create an image to portray the information contained within light and dark contrasts. If the color gets high enough, the detail is lost. That's saturation clipping. Unfortunately, hypersaturation and saturation clipping have become very common in modern astrophotography, leading to images that have lost information, and hypersaturation combined with an overstretched histogram leads to posterization. But posterization is a topic for another video. In this video, let's take a look specifically at the consequence of hypersaturation and saturation clipping. The image before you presents the Rosette Nebula. It's a two-part mosaic, which I shot back on December 16th when we had good dark skies and virtually ideal conditions. On the right, you'll see the layer panel and the histogram box above it. Let's take a look at the layers first. The bottom layer is a proof layer. That's why there's that locked icon on the lower right. That layer is made invisible. We don't ever work with that. That's a proof in case I need to access the original information when working with an image at any time. It's a pretty standard procedure in layer-based non-destructive editing to keep a proof layer like that. Above that layer is a duplicate to the background layer. That's our rosette. You can see that image is presently visible with that little dot icon on the right, and that's the layer that we'll work with. Right above that is a tool layer labeled Saturation Max. It's a vibrance and saturation tool, and the saturation has been set to 100%. We're going to use that to illustrate clipping, but right now it's turned off. You can see that because the dot on the right is not active. At the very top, you'll see a layer called an unsharp mask. An unsharp mask is a sharpening tool, a very powerful sharpening tool, since it's less inclined to create the chunky, choppy look that can happen with tools such as clarity-based or contrast-based sharpening. The unsharp tool is set to default. In other words, it's not having any effect on our image. I'm simply using it to contain the layer below, the bandpass mask. A bandpass mask or filter controls the high bandwidth information. This is the sharpness and fine detail contained within an image. And this tool can show us a black and white version of exactly what hypersaturation or saturation clipping is doing to an image. Let's get started. So I've turned on the vibrance and saturation tool. As you can see, the saturation is set to 100%. And wow, we have those popping colors. So popping, in fact, that this image is well on its way toward posterization. Because amping up the saturation like this has caused us to lose a lot of the subtle light and dark information. Watch as over the next few seconds, I switch back and forth between normal saturation and saturation clipped. Notice how the subtler shades of light and shadow vanish within the complex tangle of the weaving gases of the Rosette Nebula whenever we crank the saturation back up. If we zoom in, we can see this much more clearly. Here we are looking at the heart of the Rosette Nebula. Pay attention to all the fine and delicate shadow contained within this image. Now watch what happens to that light and shadow when we move the saturation up again. The delicate weaving of that tangled light and shadow is clipped, lost, in the overwhelming, eye-popping color. Let's switch to our Benpask mask view. Now you are seeing the color extracted and the fine detail information portrayed in grayscale. Watch what happens to it when we turn the saturation back up. Notice the change. The less fine detail throughout the image is almost unchanged, but the more delicate light in shadow was altered by the increase in saturation. Watch again. Here, there is no saturation clipping, and here we have saturation clipping. Look at the upper center to upper left, down the left, away from the border of the image, and back toward the lower center of the image. Let's try viewing this in a different way. Here is our original image. 
But overlaying it, we have two new layers. One is a high pass filter. High pass filters capture the fine detail in the upper band widths. The other is a black rectangle set to the overlay composite mode, or as compositing is known in Affinity Photo, a blend mode. This will overlay the black of the black rectangle onto our image, almost as if much of the detail has been lifted off the image and laid upon a black light poster. Like this. The black overlay will help us visualize what's going on here. And when we turn on our high pass filter, we reduce the information that we can visualize from the image down to the fine detail. The black plate with the overlay composite helps us to see that information better. Otherwise, the information is faded because fine detail is delicate, like this. So, with our black plates and the high pass filter on, we can see the outline of the information from the Rosette Nebula. This is the information without saturation clipping. Its appearance is almost like delicate paint strokes against the black canvas. But, when we introduce hypersaturation, and thus saturation clipping, we get this smearing and loss of detail. As if the paint strokes become broader and clumsier, the colors are intensified, but also simplified, as the data within the image is lost. Once again, here are the delicate strokes prior to saturation clipping, and the broad and thick strokes of delicate information loss following saturation clipping. Let's go back and watch again how this affects the image in color. This is the image with natural saturation, and here is the image oversaturated with saturation clipping. Watch again. Natural saturation will transition again to popping hypersaturation, and watch what happens to the fine detail. Saturation clipping has effectively smeared the fine detail. Finally, let's take a look at what happens to the histogram when we hypersaturate. Here I've zoomed in on the histogram, it's top right. When the saturation is normal and balanced, notice all three color channels are fully contained within the histogram. But when we amp up the saturation, notice that much of the red and green channels have moved off to the left of the histogram. That information is clipped. Hypersaturation is leading to saturation clipping beginning the process of posterization of the image. Saturation clipping is a problem common to new photographers because amping up the saturation gives the immediate impression of a popping, eye-catching image. And it's not my place to tell somebody whether or not they should like the effect, but with everything in photography, there is a cost. The more you amp up saturation, the more that you risk clipping information. And the fine detail is contained in the high bandwidth frequencies. And it is the first thing to go as saturation goes up and up and up. I don't know how or why, but saturation clipping has turned up more and more in modern astrophotography. To the point that, at times, it almost seems like it's gone mainstream. But it is a technique that has a heavy cost to the fine detail in the image. Compositionally, in terms of classical training of photography, saturation clipping has always been a no-no. Something we want to avoid. And it is possible to amplify color and detail without saturation clipping, but only to a degree. Once we start to get far above what's really there, the cost of the saturation is going to come in the form of the high bandwidth information. To avoid saturation clipping, watch your histogram. Once color channels start moving off the histogram, you're clipping. A well-known audio editor, I can't recall his name, once said, don't watch the equalizer, use your ears. So I would add to that, even more than watching the histogram, watch your image. Move saturation up slowly and cautiously, keeping a special eye on the areas where there is a delicate balance between light and dark. And the moment you start to see that information fade, pull back a little on your saturation and stop there. Most of the layer-based photo editors have a saturation change option that will help to avoid clipping. In Affinity Photo on the Vibrance and Saturation tool, that's your Vibrance slider. It is not complete protection, however. If you push it too hard, even the vibrance slider will clip. But the general rule of thumb is that once you start to go beyond color that's actually in the image, you risk clipping. So do watch that detail carefully. My personal choice in editing is I would rather emphasize detail than introduce falsely intense color. Well, I hope that helps you in your editing. Now get out there and shoot the sky.